Uh, okay, so thank you for uh, agreeing to do a uh, short interview with us. Um, so, why do you think pluralism in economics is important to, uh, to economics and our understanding of the world? Well, because I don't think one view has a monopoly of truth, and, uh, and certainly not the current view. I don't think uh, uh, neo neoclassical economics is, a com by any means, a complete or even accurate account of the way um, the economy works and um, the way human beings behave. Yeah. Well, I think I think uh, it, it it it's got to um, have a more a spacious view of what it's doing than just saying, well, it's a study of allocation of scarce resources um, because you also need to take into account um, growth and um, uh, the whole economy and, and, and how it develops. I think the, the most concrete step would be to um, uh, give students knowledge of um, previous thinkers uh, what they have said, uh, and uh, also um, knowledge of economic history. Mm. Economics has always been contested throughout its history. There have often been main mainstreams, but there have been lots of people who uh, criticised them all the way through, right, right from the 18th century onwards. And so, not to be aware of this and to think of it purely as something like physics, where no one really wants to know what old physicists really thought about things, except in, incidentally physicists do. They're much more interested in their forebears than economists are. Um, but certainly um, you know, economics has absolutely no claim to be re um, regarded as, as the repository of all that's good in, 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 in its previous thought. Well, I think, uh, well, medium and short, uh, I, think, I think it's got to Get, get back to something like um, the full, full potential of, of what the economy is capable of producing. I think it's got to be much, much better at developing the potential of its own people, which is uh, sadly, uh, sadly truncated now by the, by the, the, you know, the, the, the jobs and the type of jobs that are available to people. I think you know, the human, human, human potential has got to be increased, and that means much more attention to education and really, really getting good education. That's what I'd spend money on. Um, uh, the other thing is, I think we need a massive infrastructure, public infrastructure program to repair decades of neglect of many essential features of the infrastructure, including. Um, uh, including uh, housing, social housing. And I think um, just develop different ideas of growth. What is growth and what's it for? And what is, is GDP you know, a good measure of, uh, of human fulfillment? So I think we've got to do all those, try and do all those things. It's really a new thinking. I mean, actually, what policy proposals one can you know, argue about? how much to spend on this, how much to spend on that. I would have thought also we've got to get a different idea of what a balanced budget is. I just think we've just regressed enormously in thinking about public accounts and what's, profit, what's, uh, what's uh, productive and what isn't. Yeah, that can be linked back to the, uh, the, the, state, the proposal that the government should always aim to uh, run a surplus um, which was put forward by George Osborne a while ago. Yeah, yeah. Now that deserves a lot of criticism. Yes. <laughs> well, it's 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 abandoned most of Keynes. I mean, that's been the main main shift. I mean, I know there are people who who, who say they're new Keynesian, and I'm told that you know, and it, central bank policy is meant to be new Keynesian. So the word Keynes is there, but the theoretical basis of Keynesianism has been abandoned. So it's almost as though you know, you've returned to a pre-Keynesian way of thinking. And, in fact, um, if, you look at, um, if you look at citations of the main, main um, uh, economics journals, you see that in the middle of the last century there was a big period of turbulence in economics, judged by the number of comments and critiques 
of articles that appeared. Uh, so you start in 1900 where there's almost nothing, and then now there's almost But in the middle there was a lot, and that's died away, and what's been left really is, 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 is two periods where there isn't much going on in the way of theoretical discussion. And one might almost think the Keynesian revolution was an interlude or a deviation from some equilibrium way of thinking in economics, you know, not equilibrium economics, but some quiet period. And that's, that's uh, um, rather depressing because I would have thought the crash of 2008 ought to have stirred up a lot of theoretical uh, argument. And the answer is it hasn't. Um, the only people who are really challenging are students, actually. Well, I think post-Keynesians do build on one essential idea of Keynes, which is um, that um, uh, investment is a very uncertain business. And, um, and, and therefore they, they, they build on the... Un that was his, the basis of his theoretical attack on, on the classic economics of his day. The new Keynesians, all the new Keynesians really do, I mean, well, they allow for a short run Phillips curve and they also um, um, allow for various imperfections and say policy must take account of that, but that's what they were saying before Keynes. I mean, all that was... Uh, was already um, on the on, on, on in the discussion before before Keynes came along. I mean, the other thing the new Keynesians say is that uh, monetary policy should aim to sort of stabilise the economy in some way via that is via the uh, uh, target rate of inflation. But that was what the monetary reformers were saying before Keynes, and uh, that's why I wanted to know something about the history of the subject. Well, I don't think combination is quite, quite the thing, but you know, it was John Stuart Mill who said anyone who's only an economist isn't a very good economist. Um, so, you, which, whichever, whichever your home discipline is, you have to uh, be influenced by what's going on in other disciplines and other fields of study, because otherwise you don't get an understanding of human behavior, a proper understanding of human and behavior. And, and that means your, 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 your system of um, causes and consequences is, is, is much too simple. Um, so, you, yeah, you've got to. Now, whether, how they mesh, they've got to start talking to each other, first of all. And undoubtedly, I think, um, uh, maths is a huge barrier to anyone talking to economists. Um, and I'm not sure how you overcome that. Because maths is central to economics' claim to be a hard science. I think it's false, but nevertheless, that's mm -hmm. the way the discipline is done. Uh, so would you argue that economics isn't a science, or would you argue for a middle road of a social science? Well, we, we, we define these terms Difficult as so questions. loose. <laughs> yes. I, the best I can say, it's not a hard science. Okay. Well, there is a populist mood, and it's partly because of the failure of um, established leaders, really, to create a, a society which people can look on with hope. I mean, there's a lot of discontent. It's also that the language of public life is very disconnected from the language of, of, of ordinary people. They, they do talk uh, totally as... I mean, people talk of a democratic deficit. I mean, that's just a mild way of... Um, if you, if you ever read anything issued by the European Commission in Europe or any of I mean, it's in a language that no one um, who's half sane would want to spend more than five minutes going through. Um, and, 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 and the disconnect between action and, and, and words is so huge. So people come in to fill the gap. Um, and usually they're right-wing populists, though they could be left-wing. I mean, the, I mean, Syriza's obviously left, but that's slightly exceptional in, 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 in the European... And Donald Trump, he's a... Well, it's very hard to classify him. Um, he's Republican, but, I mean, he, he, he espouses quite a few democratic positions. Mm -hmm. And he's not a small-state interventionist... Uh, global intervent, uh, you know, he, he, he's, he, he, his, 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 his mix is his own, but he's just captured the Republican Party because 
he speaks a popular language.